Hey everyone, welcome to the React Masterclass. This is the Zero to Hero tutorial series in which we'll cover React from the very basics to advanced. Okay, so this is the high level agenda. So we'll start with what is React. We'll talk about the installation and setup of React. Then, they, then we'll go through the core features of React. Then we'll see testing the deployment and we'll do a couple of projects on React. Okay, exciting. Let's start. What is React? React is an open source JavaScript library. It was created by Meta. So React is used to create high performance UI interfaces. It's based upon components and it can be used to create single page applications. It can be used to create mobile applications with the help of React Native. And it can also be used to create server side rendered applications for SEO with the help of Nets.js. Now talking about adoption of React. So React is the most popular library in the front end community. Okay, so here there's a brief comparison between AngularJS, React View, and the Backbone. Okay, this data is from NPN Trends, and this is the latest data. So you can see that as of today, there are around 20 million downloads per day. You can see that these are View and AngularJS. So they're still lagging behind by around 15 million downloads. So this is stats of per day, and you can see that from the launch, it actually spiked up in 2017. And you can see that adoption grew over the period of time. There was a small spike in Vue.js, but it actually went down. I'm not sure what was the reason of this spike, but it actually went down. So let's compare between like framework and library. React is often termed as a front-end library instead of framework. But if you talk about Angular and Vue, so they are shipped as frameworks, right? So what's the core difference? So framework actually provides the ecosystem and complete toolkit to develop an application. Definitely there are pros and cons of that, right? So Angular, if you see that it comes with a CLI, it comes with components, directives, HTTP client, router, dependency injection, right? But React just comes with components and boots. So it's very lightweight. And the beauty of it is that you can plug in these things if you want, if your application needs. With Angular, even if your application doesn't need it, it's actually like comes along with it, right? Another thing is that frameworks are strongly opinionated. What I mean by that is it comes with a lot of rules and guidelines and you have to actually adhere to those rules if you are creating the application using those frameworks. But libraries are quite flexible, okay? You can include or import any library whenever you want. And the same case is with React, right? You can include React in any project and uh, it will work. Even if it's like vanilla JavaScript project that you have created in the past, you can actually import React and create some components and use along with it, okay? Now, what is the need for React? Why uh, Facebook went ahead to create it? The major issue was the UI updates, okay? So whenever like you you have created application using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, right? You have to write a lot of verbose code for creating those HTML templates and you have to take, take care of doing all the DOM manipulations by yourself, okay? You have to use the core DOM APIs to do all those DOM manipulations which actually ends up being very complex and application can easily mess up, okay? But with the React, okay, we get component as one of the core features of React. Okay, so code is like quite well structured, it's very readable, and it's easy to maintain. You get all the benefits of reusability. Second major thing is that the performance bottleneck. Okay, since like Facebook, you can see that Facebook is sort of infinite scroll. You can continuously scroll and there can be like hundreds or thousands of posts. Okay, so Facebook was like facing this issue of performance on the browser. The website actually got very slow. The reason for that is that we need to update, re-render the application multiple times whenever anything changes, right? Whenever someone is making any comment or someone is liking, someone is sending you a message, each and every time or there's a notification, each and every time the application needs to be updated. Doing all those things, doing the DOM manipulation actually makes your application very slow. So for the same reason, uh, Facebook created this magic sauce, which is termed as a virtual DOM. Uh, that is a copy of your actual DOM, okay? And all the updates that your application needs to do, it does everything in a virtual DOM. And at the end of it, it just applies this entire virtual DOM to your DOM tree. So there are not updates each and every time. There's just update like very few times because you are batching all those updates, right? So with the help of that, it was able to achieve like very, very good performance. So that is why like it's adopted in a lot of other applications after Facebook, okay? The other thing is that state management, okay? so. 
React provides a lot of like good state management APIs. So it comes with context API. It works very well with Red X. Okay, so you get all the state management benefits with React, which was earlier hard to maintain without React. Okay, so let's move ahead. Not talking about the core features of React. First, we already discussed its component based architecture. So imagine a website like Amazon. Okay, so you have to create a navigation bar. You have to create a sidebar. You have to create different product cards. Okay, you have to create a footer. So each and everything uh, in this application can be created into different components. And the good thing about it that components can be reused. Okay, so there is a button at a lot of places. You can just create a button component and use across your application. So this React is like entirely based upon component-based architecture. It comes with virtual DOM. We already talked about it. We'll talk in more detail in the upcoming sessions about it. Okay, now it comes with a declarative API. So what I mean by declarative, you have to just tell React what to do. You don't have to interact with the core DOM APIs, just have to pass certain data points, just have to provide like some HTML, some data points and React will internally take care of rendering everything, doing the performance optimization, doing the updates real time. You don't have to take care of house, tell it what to do. And with the help of like declarative APIs, it uh, does everything under the hood. Okay. The other thing is one-way data binding. So you folks might have already heard about two-way data binding, which was uh, the main uh, MVP for Angular, okay? And which turned out to be, uh, I mean, in the short run, it was very good, but it has its own complexities, okay? React has this one-way data binding where the model and view, okay, you change the model, the view gets updated. So it's always one-way, it's not two-way right, like it was in Angular. And definitely, I mean, it has its own performance advantages, the, the way uh, React has implemented one way data binding. Okay. Now uh, React comes with a lot of good debugging tools. Okay. So you get a Chrome extension for React through which you can debug your applications. If you are using Redux, then Redux also, it has its own debugging uh, tools that you can use. And React has a lot of very good testing library that you can embed in your application and test it. Okay. Uh, needless to say, React has a very good community support. You'll find like answer for each and everything usually. Okay. Which is somewhat hard if you're using a library, which doesn't has a good adoption. Okay. So that was about this first session. In the next session, we'll talk about the installation. We'll do a setup using Create a React app. Okay, so stay tuned. This other video will be coming soon. Till then, you can subscribe to the channel. You can press the bell icon to get the latest updates about this entire series.